Without Jesus, you ain't got no freedom, folks. You can't give people freedom without the Holy Ghost. You cannot give people freedom. In government places, it's just like the, they teach you. The alcoholics, it's alcoholic anonymous. They teach you once a alcoholic, always one. But what are you doing then? What are you wasting your time for? And Jesus delivers, you ain't no alcoholic no more. If Jesus delivers, you ain't no drug addict no more. We've got ex, we've got ex drug addicts in here. It's alcohol. Hallelujah! And we've got proof. We've got living proof that Jesus Christ still delivers. Yes! Oh, we got testimony. A living testimony that Jesus Christ is still Lord. Good to have you right now. It's a blessing. 
know what they believe. They don't know what they're doing. Folks is out of whack in every direction. Bam. Bam. Hallelujah. Glory. But if you're cold, shut the defeated Jesus. And in your right mind, you're blessed today. the graveyard. You could have been in judgment. You could have been in hell. But God gave you a chance. He reached out to you. He broke them yokes off you. Something just happened one day. Something took place in your life one day. And you come to realize I'm not who I used to be. I really am free. That's what I said. I told myself you really saved. You must be really changed. Something is really happened to you. Praise God. It was visible to me. It become visible to me.
Don't even enjoy the meal. You got to get a little hungry and enjoy what you eat. Folks don't even that's why they don't. They don't even enjoy what they eat no more. They don't give yourself time to be hungry. In between, give me a snack. You just eat. Now, I need a snack. Pray. You need to read your Bible and get a hold of God.
got to use your faith. You got to exercise your faith. Amen. Amen. You want it to get strong, you got to use it. You can't just set it on a shelf Amen. and use what's, a, what's available. There'll always be something you can use. I mean, the devil put it out on a silver platter, but he's got something else in mind. All the while, he's putting you in. All the while, he's getting you depending on him, believing in him instead of God. The devil's not on your side. Bible said he'd feet come to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come. That you might have life. That you might have it more abundantly. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You can't just jump up. You gotta use your faith. You gotta exercise. You walk with God. You gotta believe. You gotta get out and use it. In small things. Yes. Praise God. Let your faith begin to mature. Amen. Let your faith begin to get strong. You won't be afraid to tackle the devil. You won't be afraid to pray for somebody with cancer. You won't be afraid to pray for some, somebody with blinded eyes. Or in a wheelchair. Those that don't have to put up, they'll now bring them in, bring the blind and oh. the wheelchairs. They ain't even got in mind. Get nobody. Here. Just trying to get the crowd where they get the money. But there's a need out there. And God has given us means to meet those needs. He give us power. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall be able to hurt you or harm you. He give us power over sickness, disease, cancer, leukemia, blinded eyes, crippled legs, bad backs, bad knees, Bad eyes. I give you power to heal the sick. He commanded them that. And Matthew 10, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Cleanse the lepers. Cleanse the lepers. Lepers is, is, is disease. Catching disease. Contagious. Jesus said, cleanse the lepers. Lord. You scared of it. You ain't going to do much cleaning. That's right. true. I said, if you're scared of it, you ain't going to do much cleaning. You got to have a thought to it. got to have a thought to it. You're scared you're going to catch it. You ain't going to get around. That's right. Come on. Come on. <laughs> but he said, cleanse the left. Yeah. He also said, raise the dead. He talking about the dead dead. Graveyard dead. Coffin dead. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Raised a woman's son from the dead. He stopped the funeral. Stopped the hearse. Flag the hearse down. Yeah. The woman was crying, the only son that died. Mm -hmm. Jesus had compassion. Yeah. He laid his hand on his brow and said, Young man, arise. Yeah. That young man popped up a man. He gave that woman a son. Yes, sir. Cried her tears. Yeah. Took her sorrow away and gave her some happiness. Hallelujah. I said, took her tears away, took her sadness away, and restored her joy and her happiness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He will heal you. He is a healer. Jesus is still the same yesterday, today, and forever.
that if you're believing and have faith in him, what he did it to work in Paul's, he'll take away your disease. He'll heal you. It's not God's will that you be sick. No more than for you to be a sinner. He says it's not God's will that any man should perish, but all should come to repentance. But it ain't God's will for you to be sick. He, God will heal you. He'll restore your health. He'll give you back. Sometimes we find ourselves in a battle. We find ourselves in a fight. But just hold fast. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Keep asking. Keep knocking. Don't give up. He said men always ought to pray and not faint. There's a certain uh, um, just judge. In this city, there was a widow woman. Mm -hmm. Luke 18. He said, this old judge was mean. He didn't fear God. Didn't care nothing about who you was. But this widow woman kept coming down that courthouse. When that courthouse had opened, she was back there again. Oh, judge. Avenge me. Abide her sin. Hallelujah. He wouldn't for a while. Because he didn't care about it. But what got his attention, she got to worry. Started getting on his skin. God was just telling him, don't you quit. Because you don't get your prior answer the first time. First time you come to court and that judge says, get her out of here. Get out of my courthouse. I don't want to hear what you got to say. Come back the next day. Hallelujah. Don't you give up. If you don't get your prayer answered today, come back tomorrow. Thank God, please, for tomorrow. Your prayer will be answered. God will answer your prayer. God will bring deliverance to your children, to your body. Don't you give up. Shall not God avenge his healing? Don't look at the circumstance. Look above. Yeah. Lift your eyes. It's hard sometimes yeah. because of the love and the compassion in you. But pick your eyes up and look under the hill. Yeah. Look under Jesus, yeah. who is the heart and the finish. Yeah. Have your faith. Yeah. Don't build up in your mind. Ain't nothing to be done about this. There's something to be done about anything. I don't care what your situation is. There's something to be done about it. And you know what? Jesus is the man to do it. I said Jesus is the man to do it. Something to be done about your situation. You don't have to say, well, it's just, it is what it is. A lot of people just settle and just give up and say, it is what it is. It is right now what it is, but it ain't going to be always. God's going to hear my prayer. Change is coming. I'm waiting on my change. My Redeemer liveth. He's going to visit me in my flesh. I'm going to see God yet in my flesh. I'm going to see God. Stripped of everything. The devil said that Job still retained his integrity. He still believed you. Turn me loose on him again. He did. He turned him loose on him. He took everything. But you know, Job did not lose his faith, his integrity. He held on. He didn't look at what he was losing. He held on to the strong arm, to the strong man. Hallelujah. He didn't let his eyes go down to the situation. If he had it, he'd have lost it. Because he'd have had nothing. He lost his camels, his, his donkeys, and even all his children got killed with a whirlwind. Seven children. At once. One of 
one of his servants would escape and tell him this happened before they could get set out. He quit hassling another and run up there. Oh, Lord said, lightning just struck all you sheep. Now they come running to Sabine and just took your camels. Now they your children's all day. If he didn't have his eyes above a man's head, he couldn't have stood on this. He had his faith in God. He said, I know my Redeemer lady. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on my change. Something's going to turn around here for me. I'm not taking my eyes off of Jesus. Something's going to turn around for me. Something's going to turn around for me. Something's going to happen a positive way. Oh, hallelujah. Lift your hands and pray. You always ought to pray. And not faint. Men always ought to pray and not faint. Don't faint because you ain't saw an answer yet. That's what he's talking about. Don't faint. Just don't pop up. Time you ask. Wait. He said, I said you wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. You might be weary now, but get somewhere and wait on God. He'll mount you up with strong wings. You'll be able to fly above your storms. He'll take you up where you belong. You're an eagle. You're a heavenly bird. Hallelujah. You don't scratch with the chickens. Thank God he'll take you up above the storm. Life. You'll run and not be weary. You'll walk and not faint. Men always ought to pray. Men always ought to pray. Jesus said this. Jesus said men always ought to pray. Take somebody by the hand and say men. Everyone always ought to pray. Always ought to pray. Always on. Have a prayer life or a life of prayer. Men always ought to pray. And no faith. You say me. Glory. I said glory. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 18. Let me just turn out and quote it, but let me read it. Luke 18 said, And he spake a parable to them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. If you faint, your prayer is over. If you don't come back alive and get back on your feet, start praying again. Be the only way. Men always ought to pray and not to faint. Our time for too easy giving up because we don't see it quick like we want to see. But he's teaching us here. Don't faint. God may be just holding out to get you to come back. Again. Be holding out to get you to pray again. He knows what he's doing. Sometimes we get slack and God allows things to come on us. He knows we're going to pray. He knows we're going to get a hold of him in these situations. Where it's come to shove. We won't get out of the business with God. He knows that. God help us to pray without these things. Help us to talk to God without having to be shook up. Time is winding up. He's going to have to shake some folks up or leave them behind. 
But you know, we can save ourselves from being shook up, shook out, right. shook down by getting a hold of God. Amen. Making yourself available Amen. to God's change. Amen. Making yourself available to God's reproof yes. and God's word. Amen. Amen. So he said here, and he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men all always to pray, not to faint. Saying that was in a city, a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. He didn't fear God. You deal with something, somebody don't fear God. I mean, you deal, you be on the job. You deal with somebody don't fear God. You you got a mess around. Amen. Amen. And anything can come out. Of you. you have to watch you kind of folks. You can't trust. Said there was a city a judge would fear not God nor regarded man, especially a judge on the throne, judge in the judge seat. Yeah. Stand before him. He don't care nothing about you. Don't fear God. Yeah. And he, you're going to have a little old, little old something. He wind up slapping you in jail because you didn't look right. But he's mad at his wife. Put everybody in jail. Yeah. <laughs> Put you in jail because of what's your name. Yeah. Put him in there. He's one of them. <laughs> Pretty rough to slap a man in jail going, what's your name? Cost you for being true. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Avenge me. She's teaching us. Not to give up when we need something from God. He's teaching us yeah. not to quit praying, not to faint, not to get discouraged, yeah. but to believe God. Yes, sir. We're in an hour that we're in a time that anything can come up in any direction, folks. Right, amen. Got a lot going on in this world. Life. We're facing so much every day. We get up, we get on the highway, we go to the store. You don't know who's going to go wild, who's going to got fired, and they're coming back for revenge. Come back shooting. The gate on in. He was accustomed. People just hear a little pop, 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 pop. You see them going everywhere now. Right. They ain't going to be called playing call it woof. Right. Just a little, you can't even play with pop, pop. People hurt to say. So much, so much, people get shot. Amen. Amen. And he would not for a while, but afterward. Back to verse 3. And there was a widow in that city. She came to him saying, Avenge me, my adversary. And he would not for a while. He held out. But God has said, Sometime I'll hold out because I'm trying to work out something inside your life. I'll hold out and I won't answer you because you're going to take care of that thing. I told you already to take care. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I told you already to get rid of that thing. Get rid of that spirit. Sometimes you have to let something drop on you. Drop, drop something severe a lot of times. Drop on you and hit you. And it makes you repent. It makes you see your wrongs. It makes you cry out to God. Forgive me, Lord. I have mercy on me. Please. Don't let me leave here like this. Turn upside the ditch. You 
jammed and the car on fire. You repent then, won't you? You walk out of church, won't get the altar. You pray then. That vehicle's upside down. You jammed and ain't nobody around. I'd rather pray when there ain't no trouble, wouldn't you? I'd rather ask God to search my heart. If I, I, if I didn't think I'd done that, I'd say, Lord, search my heart. Lord, I do all the time. I said, Lord, if there's hidden sin, forgive me. Search my heart. Lord, if there's something I don't know about, help me, Lord. Wash me. Cleanse me. Lord, I don't want to be caught. I don't want to be caught, Lord. Sin in my life. I mean, that, that, that highway is dangerous. The world's dangerous. And you be sitting in a restaurant. Folks are crazy now. You're looking for somebody to kill because they're mad at the wife. People used to not be like this. But their spirits took them over. Because there's demons taking people over. We need God. We need God's protection. We need that wall of fire around us. Just riding down the highway, you need that protection. Oh, and folks drive so wild, Amen. run right up on you, pull out the head up. Amen. You just have to be on your P's and Q's. Amen. Can't be playing around on a cell phone now. Amen. Get pull dead out of the head of you. Yes. Just, just looking at you. Amen. Pull right out, won't you to stop, forcing you to stop. No <laughs> You ain't got time to stop. Amen. Amen. He would not fall high, but act what he said within himself. You know what happened? She kept coming. It made him change yeah. his mind about her. Right. It changed him, but it changed his mind about her. It made him give her what she wanted. Go ahead, preacher. It don't say he changed. God saved. But he, he, her continual coming started getting weary of him. And he said, I'm going to get rid of this woman by giving her what she I can't think of no better way to get rid of her but to give her what she's asking for. He's telling her, don't you quit. Keep on worrying me. Keep on coming. Keep on. Keep on calling my name. Keep on. Don't give up. Don't don't give the don't give no slack. Yeah. Don't don't give no slack Go ahead. to the situation. Amen. Don't give the devil no chance to get a bigger hold in the situation. Right. All on your face. Yes, Lord. One thing you can do, you fall on your face and say, God have mercy on me. Yeah. Maybe feel like in your spirit you've lost control, but you can't fall on your face and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Be merciful to me. Help me, God. I need some help. Have you ever been there? Sound like most of y'all been there. And there's some stuff going on in church. People just turn foot loose. Try to tighten up, straighten up. Think about it is, God's going to set things in order. He's coming back. He's going to get his church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. And the bride's got to be ready. How many of the Bible said he was coming at he shall present himself a bride in church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle, or any sort of thing. So he's got to set it in order. He will set it in order. He will set it on. He will get us ready. He said in, in, in Revelation 19, let us be glad and rejoice. For the marriage supper of the Lamb has come. And what? The bride has made herself ready. The bride has to get ready. The maids is in there in that back room checking her out from head to toe. Before she steps out and walks down that aisle and comes, changes her name. 
and enjoy him because the one she loves. Hallelujah. 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 She's got to have everything in order. You think about this life and how important it is to brides and to families. Think about God. Think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. Let us be glad and rejoice for the marriage supper of the Lamb has come. And the bride has made herself ready. Him knows we're the church. We're the bride. Amen. We're the church. Me and join to him. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. It's like, that's what he's liking it to a bride getting ready. She's in, she's in that room getting all the raffles and everything, checking her out, making her perfect, making her perfect, Amen. putting her through the rings, checking her out from head to toe. And she's got to be with her to go through that. Now, I'll get away from you. I ain't worried about that rabble. Back up. My head's all right. <laughs> yeah, young lady, you're going to go out looking like you shouldn't be looking. You ain't going to please that husband. I'm tired of all this. Leave me alone. Call me working on me. Forty years. I ain't ready. I ain't ever going to be. You ain't ready, little sister. You ain't ready. Let me know we got some cleaning up. For we got some doing this to do. Amen. Let me lift your hands and say, God, I know I need some. Some changes I, in me, God, in my own self, in my own mind. I know this vow is out of a doubt. I need some changes.
why I believe it. Yeah. It's written in the Bible. Amen. That we become like Jesus. He'd be the firstborn among many brethren. Right. He also said the whole earth is moaning and travailing. Yeah. Wait for us yeah. to come forth yeah. with power yeah. to deliver them. Yeah. They're crying today. People are crying. Drug addicts are crying. People are bound to crying. Yeah. They're crying for help. There ain't no help in the rehab. Most of them. There ain't no help for these folks in the hospitals. There ain't no help. We're the help. God has called us to deliver. He's chosen us to deliver this world. Said the whole earth is moaning. Man, God, can't you hear that moan today? Can't you look at people in the eyes? They don't know what to do no more. They're bound. They're just looking for a little peace. And a lot of them are going to run out of time. They'll commit suicide. They're going to run out of time. They, 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 the body won't, won't, won't come that high. Their heart will bust. They quit beating. They can't go up no higher. Their body won't permit them to go no higher. And they die. You can see it in the eyes. He said the whole earth is moaning and prevailing for the manifestation, for the church to come out of the closet, for the church to come out from behind these walls with power, with power to set free the captive, to deliver those that are bound. The earth is moaning, the streets, the crack houses, the meth houses, the war houses. That they're, they're waiting, they're moaning, they're crying for help. They're crying in their hearts that late at night. The little sleep they do get. Most of the time they're staring at a wall or walking in the streets. Just rolling because they're miserable. They're crying. Somebody help me. A lot of us known raised in church, they're crying, oh God, have mercy. God be merciful. Send somebody to help me. Tell me somewhere I can go to get some help. Send me somewhere I can get some help. Somebody can pray for me. Yes, yes. Oh, Jesus. Yes. The whole earth is moaning. Amen. Yes. For the manifestation of the Son. Of God. Will you, will you say yes? Will you say yes, Lord? Yes, manifest yourself through me. Yes, Lord, I give myself to you. Yes, I lay down my life. You. Use me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. Use me to help somebody. Have you ever been? Have you ever been in some? Have you ever been in a miserable place? Then you know what it is. You know what it is. Don't ever forget when you were set free. Don't forget others are still there. God brings you out. Don't you forget those others? Let that be. Let that be. What your determination is to go back and get those. I gotta go back and help some. I got to go back. When that eagle stays out there too long, he can't fly out. Then them eagles that's over there eating a fresh rabbit or whatever they call it. They think, oh, my brother's out there in the wilderness. I got to take up some meat. They'll fly over. They won't, they won't light down there because they've been there. Once an eagle gets out of the desert, he never goes back. He got better sense than us. Once an eagle comes out of that desert, he don't land his foot back out there no more. He learned his lesson. And it was about time for some of us to learn our lesson. Yes. Lord, I never let my feet land out there no more. But he'll fly. He won't land out of where, but he'll fly over and he'll drop him some meat. And he'll fly around and scream 
what he's telling him. Come on, little brother. Eat that meat and live. Don't die. Eat, son. Eat. Eat. Don't die here. Yes, sir. Don't die. Don't die. Don't you let the devil kill you in this wilderness. Don't you let the devil kill you in a half back safe condition. You rise up and eat your street today. You rise up and digest the word of the Lord and say, God, I'm coming out. I'm not going to let the devil kill me out here. I'm not going to let the devil destroy me. Out here in this wilderness. I'm going to eat the meat and live. I'm going to eat the meat and crawl out of this valley. I'm climbing back up on the hill. I'm going to beat these old feathers off. And I'm going to wait on my change. your feet and praise him. Stand on your feet and praise him. Come on, stand on your feet. Go, oh, stand on your feet and praise him. Lift them hands up and praise him. Lift them hands up and praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Lift your hands up to me. Tell him you love you. Oh, I think about that old song we used to sing in the Baptist church. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence I will surely live. Oh, for you today. Say, just as I am without one plea, that thy blood was shed for me. Oh, Lord, I come, I come. Oh, I surrender. He's looking for a surrender today. Jesus is saying, surrender. Come to me. Oh, you the laden, and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my meek and load and you shall find a rest. You'll find rest at the feet of Jesus. This old world ain't going to give you no rest. You'll find rest at the feet of Jesus. Can you say that? Come, let's gather around these altars today. Will you come? Will you come and let's pray? Will you come and let's hold us? Today?